Do, 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 do. Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to learn about projectile motion. Now before this projectile motion, we learned about horizontal projectile motion, uh, which looks a little bit like this. We have a, oops, if we were to have an object here and it were to fall to the floor, okay, if we were to call this area the floor, that would be what we call horizontal projectile motion. Now, um, the unit that we're going to do now is the other half, or instead of the other half, I guess the full up and down motion of an object. Okay, We have an object here, it gets launched and it lands somewhere here. So at this moment, uh, please get out a, a piece of paper and we'll get started. All right. So, in order to truly understand projectile motion, you need to understand the path of anything going um, in a parabolic curve. Okay, that's just a fancy way of saying an object that is thrown in the air or launched in the air and eventually comes back to the floor. Okay. We have a object there. Oh, let's reset that. Okay. We have a object that... Oops. Oh God, we have an object that is, oh, that's purple now, okay. We have an object that is on the floor, um, and let's see, we have this object right here, and it is launched up in the air, like a football that is kicked, or a soccer ball that is kicked, and eventually it will come back down um, to the floor, okay. So that, what we know is projectile motion. A um, couple of key facts that you need to know, and I'll highlight the parts that you need to copy down, is um, first of all, the projectile on the way is following a parabolic curve. Okay, parabolic is just a complicated way of saying it goes up and down. All right, so I'm doing my best to um, draw the motion here. Okay. Now, this parabolic curve has some special qualities. For example, the oh gosh, the horizontal velocity for every part of this curve will be the same. Okay, the horizontal velocity of every part of this curve is the same. So right now I'm, trying, I'm doing my best to make the arrows the same size. Okay, to really emphasize this point. All right. So if we were to say that the uh, horizontal velocity, the horizontal velocity, uh, let's make it easy and let's call it five. Okay. If the horizontal velocity here is 5, the horizontal velocity here will also be 5 meters per second. Don't forget your units. I almost forgot my units there. Okay. Uh, and that goes for any point along this curve. For example, right here, we can say that the velocity is, or the horizontal velocity, is 5 meters per second. I'm going to put a little x right there. All right? Now, that is not the same for um, a vertical velocity. Now, the reason why the horizontal velocity it is always the same is because we assume, let me put this little note there, that there is no air resistance. Okay, No air resistance. Therefore, our acceleration, the x direction, is zero meters per second squared. Okay, there's no air resistance. Um, now, on the other hand, in our y direction, okay, our velocities, uh -oh, our velocities are constantly changing. In the beginning, you know, it can be pretty big, and then little by little. Oh, geez. Little by little, the velocities actually get smaller and smaller until eventually at the peak, let me write that there, the peak, um, 
the velocity is 0 for the y direction. Okay, that's why I'm not going to draw a little um, magenta vertical arrow. Okay, now on the downward path, we have the same arrows, okay, as was on the upper path, except the only difference now is that it's going down. Ooh, fancy. Alright, so what I mean by that is if the V initial Y here was, uh, let's say, 10 meters per second, over here, the V final Y would be negative 10 meters per second. Okay, and let's pretend that here our V sub Y was 2 meters per second. Over here, you guessed it, our velocity of Y is negative 2 meters per second. Okay, so up to this point, please copy down this little drawing. Um, because we're about to get a little bit more complicated. Okay, I'm about to show you what we call the tangent. Um, or the actual velocity of the object. Because when a ball launches up in the air, we don't see these blue and magenta arrows that go in the x and the y direction. In fact, we actually see the ball uh -oh, going uh, in the direction it's supposed to. For example, here, oh geez, we see the ball going that direction, and here we see the ball going that direction, and we see the ball going in this direction, and we see the ball going in this direction, and well, the ball is going in this direction, and the ball, oh geez, and the ball is going in this direction, and the ball is going in this direction, and so on and so forth, and I'm pretty sure you guys can get the, get the point of all this, right? Alright, so the green arrow is what we call um, the actual velocity, okay? Now, in order to calculate that, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem. All right? So at any point, we can actually calculate the velocity. And of course, the rules apply here. For example, if the velocity here, okay, the actual velocity was, uh, I'm just making up a number, um, 15 meters per second, over here, okay, right across, I'm doing my best to line it up. Ah, oh, there we go. At that point, the actual velocity would be, you guessed it, negative, oh boy, negative 15 meters per second, okay? Now, in order to calculate the velocity, okay, we have velocity squared, oh boy, is equal to V sub x squared plus let me get the black one out the v sub y squared okay so what that means is if we were to take a look uh, let's say for the projectile or the object at this one over here okay um, that means what we have to do is we have to get the value for the blue arrow and square it. And then we have to get the value for the magenta arrow right here okay, and square it. And then we have to square root the entire thing. So if we were to put in values, let's actually try this for the um, initial velocity. All right, We have v sub 0 x as 5, phi squared, plus um, the magenta one, or the v sub y is the 10 squared, okay, okay, is equal to v squared, all right, so I'm just going to switch to the black ink, phi squared is 25, plus 10 squared is 100, so we have 125 is equal to v squared, 
right? And at, at that point, we have to square root it like so in order to get v is equal to, um, well, I actually don't know. Let's take a look. Let's go to a calculator. Uh-oh. Go to a calculator. Okay. If we do the square root of 125 is equal to 11.180. Okay. And so that's what I'm going to write over here. Um, we have that the square root of 125 is equal to 11.080 meters per second. Okay. So at that point, right over here, the ball is traveling 11.080 meters per second. 